Hey everybody! In this month's Hero Arts Kit video, I am going to show you some amazing little works of art. This has my name written all over it. It's a total art themed release and I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it's so much fun. So I'm actually going to do a little bit of a departure today and I'm going to show you several of the cards I made instead of just the main technique because I had so much fun doing this. To begin with, I just want to show you what the kit looks like. It has this incredible die in it that you can create art scenes with, with this fun museum setting, and it's very modern and sort of peaceful, and I just think it's beautiful. I went ahead and I cut out several of these to show you the techniques, and I also snipped the little people free. You'll see what I do with that. This Jackson Pollock style stamp set is the main stamp set in the kit. And hopefully Hero Arts will show you the design process. We got to see it and it was very fun. So I have a bunch of insides and a bunch of outsides that I'm just gonna go to town with and show you a couple of different techniques. But this is fun in that this die cuts out the art portion separately from the frame. So you can do all these fun techniques with it. So I'm going to do for my main card, one of my favorite techniques. I'm actually going to have a second video on this as well. This is just a very simple paint scraping technique. I am going to put some acrylic paint down all over this small little insert. And then I really like my six inch scraper. I'll put a link to that below, but for card makers, if you're working in an A2 US size card format, you're able to scrape an entire card front with this one, whereas some of my smaller scrapers that I use for different purposes, I can't really do that with. So I do recommend a wide scraper. I think there's a crafty version of this. This is um, actually used for car repair, <laughs> the one that I got, but I think there is a crafty version somewhere that I've seen. Now, when you're doing this technique, you will want to put dots of paint wherever you're going to start scraping. So for me, that's the top of the card and I need to make sure that that is covered with paint so that there aren't gaps at the top because you really wanna do most of your scraping in one fell swoop. So position your scraper at the top, find a way to hold onto your cardstock, which I didn't do very well, sorry about that. You might wanna maybe just tape it down and then try to just do one good clean scrape that covers the cardstock with this beautiful, beautiful bright colors with this streaky feeling. It's so simple and easy to do, but it makes such beautiful cards. Now, of course, you have a lot left on your scraper, so don't waste that. What you'll see when you do second and third scrapings is the colors mix a little bit more and they become a little bit more muted. So use that to your advantage. If you want different kind of feelings in the colors, you'll get those later on as those colors start to mix, but they're just so beautiful. It gives you like a Northern light sort of feel that I think is just ethereal. So I will grab another one and I just keep going. This is why I cut out a bunch of them because I just keep going until I'm out of paint. And then of course you can scrape any leftover paint into your art journal. You wanna to try to not go over it multiple times because that will give you more mixing, but if you have a little white spot like on the edge, then you can just try to cover that up. So here you can see how muted that becomes, really almost kind of more pastel and mixed. Very fun, super fun technique. So like I said, I will be back with another video on this showing you how to do this with different mediums, probably in the next week or so. Now I have paint all over my hands <laughs> and I have a clean craft mat. I chop my craft mats up, as you know. So I like to keep little pieces of them around for different things that I'm doing. Now I'm going to create my favorite piece of art in the entire world, which is the Chagall window in Chicago. If I could somehow invent something that would make me wealthy enough to buy the Chagall window, I would buy the Chagall window and I would sit in front of it every single day 
for the rest of my life. It is so beautiful. And if you haven't seen the Chagall window, it's in a dark room. And the light is coming through the stained glass. And it's a very spare, very modern room. And you can sit on a bench in front of the Chagall window and absorb the beautiful blue light that it gives off. And that is exactly what this dye looks like to me. So the Chagall window was the first thing I thought of when I saw this kit. So this time I'm using alcohol ink, and this is just regular cardstock. I'm not using UPO or anything like that. I'm just using my plain old regular pre-cut cardstock that I buy. And I'm putting alcohol ink on it and also spraying it with regular rubbing alcohol. I'm using two different colors of blue ink. And there's one section of the window where there's this little yellow sun that I just love. Oh my gosh, so much fun. So you can do this on regular cardstock. It's not going to give you the same sort of alcohol effects that you get on non-porous surfaces, but it doesn't matter. We're creating a little piece of art here. It's fine. There are no rules. So this is my Chagall window. And of course, this dries really fast because it's alcohol ink. But what I'm going to do is go back and draw the lines of the stained glass, which in the real thing are chaotic in a way. They're not, you know, nice orderly lines of stained glass. They sort of mimic the artwork itself. And there's some chaos built into it, which I love. Now, they also made my little inner hippie happy with this cute little 70s style floral. I'm going to create a piece of modern art with these flowers that makes them frame the heads of these little people. Now, in addition to having paint on my hands, I have alcohol ink under my fingernails. <laughs> it's a sign of a day well spent, right? So I will take one of the larger flowers. And I will center one of the flowers around the girl and one of the flowers around the guy. So I have this upside down in my Misty just so that I can fit those two flowers in there so that I'm not sort of going off the edge there, as you can see that flower doing. So I will get that all set up, pop a magnet on it, and I'm just going to keep this one black and white and super crisp because I think that the sort of graphic lines of this flower really lend themselves to a black and white card. So I'll stamp that a couple of times in intense black ink around the little lady. And then when I go to put it back together, the, the people will be back in their little spots. Now to get the flower around the head of the guy, I'm going to need to mask the flower that's around the head of the girl. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. See how that perfectly frames her head? Kind of fun. Then the people in the scene become the part of the work of art, which is very fun. So since only one of the petals is going to interfere with this smaller flower, I just cut out a mask for that one petal. And it's not going to overlap the other one, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'll pop that back in there and put this smaller flower centered on that guy's head. And just make sure that it's not going to protrude into that bottom petal, which it's not. And then just always make sure it's back in the corner of the Misty. I cannot tell you how many times this week I have misstamped even with the Misty because I'm not checking the corner. So always check the corner especially with new stamps, because the newer stamps will be a little bit stickier until you get them good and seasoned. So just be careful. Look how fun that is. I love that. Now I have a little smudge up there, but that's okay. That's going to sand right off. My hands are dirty. What can I say? So I'll pull the mask off so that you can see the finished little work of art. I love it. And see, I don't clean my stamps before I take them out. So there's no real mystery as to why I have a smudge on this piece of paper, but it's, it's going to be fine. Watch. These little manicure blocks, man. I cannot stress how important it is to have one of these on your desk. Because look, ta-da, it's clean again. So much fun. 
So when I put it back in the scene, you can see that they become part of the artwork, which I just think is, I don't know, I would write an essay about this if I was still an English major back in college about how that's sort of a meta scene. But I don't write essays anymore. Well, I write blog posts. Those are kind of like essays. But you know what I mean. So you think about it. Think about how meta a scene that is. Okay, so for this last one, is this the last one? I don't know if it's the last one. I'm going to use this super fun stencil. This sort of has a Picasso feel, but it also has a Moreau feel. And I loved Moreau when I was in college. Loved. It was so playful, and I loved that he used primary colors. So that is what I'm going to do. That was one of my favorite things about Miro. Now I'm moving the stencil around to get the shapes that I want. So see how I'm have that open space around the guy there. That is what I was trying to do when I was moving it around. So it won't necessarily be straight on the stencil, but that's okay. So I have my primary colors, my Miro colors, and I will get to work on this stencil. But you can't do any stenciling without the ink stand. So I'm going to put these in my ink stand. Keep them still. I love the little feet on here. They don't slide around on my glass mat. And I can keep the lids straight, which is something I'm not very good at. Look how dirty my hands are. My goodness, this was a good session. Okay, so I will just randomly put the primaries out and about the stencil. And they'll mix beautifully together, of course, because they're primaries. Actually, red is not a primary color. That is a common myth. But I'm going to use red because that's what Moreau used. Magenta is actually the red that is a primary color. So just keep that in mind. But like I said, no rules. You do you. I'm doing red. Now, when I do my primary, sometimes I like to go back and fill in little spots with yellows. Yellow is like the universal donor, if you will, of ink blending. It'll blend with just about anything. So I like to go add a little bit of yellow at the end because it always makes the other colors play together so nicely. And this is such a nice bright yellow. So there you go. Nice, bright, funky, modern art style stenciling for my final little work of art. So here are several of the little samples that you will see in the cards at the end of my video, and I have a couple extra. This is phenomenal. So cool. Like I said, I really hope they show the design process. This, of course, I'm thinking about Ukraine. This is a beautiful die set. This kitty set just cracks me up so much. And then, of course, I had to do the scream, another one of my top art picks. Here is the cool modern, and here is my Chagall window. So head over to my blog for more information and a giveaway, and thanks so much for watching.